I think this is a good point to pause and see why the crossover rule works. We've been using the crossover rule to predict ionic compounds and the ratio between the atoms, but we just sort of been trusting it. So let's just see why the crossover rule is the way that it is. If uh, To imagine this, I'm going to work with the compound lithium oxide. And so the crossover rule would tell us that this is minus 2 and this is plus 1. And so when I cross them over, this one becomes 2 and this one becomes 1. So it would be lithium 2 oxide. But why does that work? Why, why does all that happen? Well, remember when forming an ionic compound, the number of valence electrons in each atom is set by the kind of atom that they are. So we're assuming they start neutral and they give up their electrons or accept electrons and so they have a standard number of electrons when they start. Lithium in the first column of the periodic table forms a plus one charge because it has one electron. Oxygen in the second or third last row on the periodic table, not a noble gas, not a halogen, but one more over, forms a stable charge of minus two or has six valence electrons. We can see why that is because here's our lithiums with Lewis structures and they have one electron each. And so when they give up one electron, they have a charge of plus one. Alternatively, when oxygen accepts two electrons, it ends up with a charge of two minus, as in it's taken in two extra electrons. If we think about this, the amount of positive charge created when electrons give up electrons, the amount of electrons given, or the positive charge total, is equal to the electrons received or the negative charge total. And so this results in um, crystals where the individual piece or the individual lowest ratio of the crystal itself is neutral. This is important because if the overall crystal had a charge, then the pieces of the crystal would be repelling each other and then the whole thing would explode and fly apart. But practically here, since the amount, um, since the amount of positive and the amount of negative, the amount of electrons given up and the amount of electrons received is the same, the total charge the plus and the minus together should go to zero. And as a result, a neutral crystal or a stable crystal. So looking at lithium oxide, what I would say is that I have two of my plus ones plus one of my minus twos for an overall molecule that's neutral. Now let's see what happened there though. The original charge on lithium was plus one and the original charge on oxygen was minus two. So this minus two came over and predicted the number of lithiums that would be required to keep the uh, total molecule neutral and this plus one came over and predicted the number of oxygen molecules that would be required to keep the molecule neutral. And when we consider that what we can see then is that to predict the number of each atom, what we've done is we've crossed over the charges. So that when we multiply this number to this number, and this number to this number, they're equal to each other, and as a result the total, since this one's negative and this one is positive, will work out to zero. This will work no matter what numbers we had, right? Let's say we had aluminum three plus and oxygen two minus, then we want to figure out how to make it neutral. So we're going to have, um, so we're going to have three pluses here, multiplying by something, adding to two minuses here, multiplying to something, multiplying by something. And so what we can see is if we cross over or switch the numbers, we'll end up with two times three, which has to be equal to three times two. And since we know the order that we multiply in doesn't matter, the plus six 
and the minus 6 always end up being the same, and the overall molecule ends up being neutral. So that's just a little explanation of why the crossover rule works, um, just so that as you're going through and you're using it to predict the ratios of ionic compounds, hopefully you have a little bit more confidence that you understand that effectively what you're doing is you're keeping the overall crystal or the overall smallest unit of the crystal neutral.